Conjugated systems and heats of hydrogenation, topic of this first lesson in a whole chapter on conjugated systems and what we call pericyclic reactions. Now, in this lesson, we're gonna talk about uh, what a conjugated system is, so, and then kind of the, the most common way we compare them energetically, which is with these heats of hydrogenation. So, but later in this chapter, so the kind of the first half is devoted towards just talking about conjugated systems, and we'll talk about the pi molecular orbitals and UV vis spectroscopy and uh, addition reactions of dienes and stuff like this. And then the second half is going to be covering all these different pericyclic reactions. We'll talk about uh, uh, cycloaddition reactions, including an entire lesson devoted to diels alder reactions. We'll talk about electrocyclic reactions, and then finally, sigmatropic rearrangements as well. Now, this lesson is part of my organic chemistry playlist. I'm releasing these lessons weekly, so if you want to be notified every time I post a lesson, then subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification. All right, so we're going to talk about heats of hydrogenation. So something we visited way back in the day with alkenes and kind of the best way to introduce it. So if we look at hydrogenating, uh, say, one pentene here. So we see when we add one equivalent of hydrogen and produce pentane, that it releases 126 kilojoules of energy. So the heat of hydrogenation, so we say that delta H for this reaction is negative 126 kilojoules. But oftentimes when we report heats of hydrogenation, they're often just given as absolute values. And so oftentimes you hear people just say, well, the heat of hydrogenation is 126. Just keep in mind that that means delta H is negative 126. 26. These are always releasing energy. They're energetically going downhill. So this is a typical alkene. And, you know, back in the day with alkenes, we learned that more substituted alkenes are more stable. And therefore, when you hydrogenate them, they have less energy to release. So lower heats of hydrogenation. Uh, and we learned like, you know, trans double bonds are more stable than cis double bonds. And uh, therefore, trans double bonds release less energy, have lower heats of hydrogenation as well. Well, now we're going to see something new here. And it comes up in the context of when you have just a single sigma bond between two pi bonds, two alkenes in this case, and in which case we end up calling this a conjugated system. It turns out you can't actually treat these as two separate pi systems, so it turns out there's a, a, an interaction here between the two that makes them a part of a single larger system of pi electrons, and that's kind of going to be the, the main crux of this entire chapter. And so we can kind of see this first in these heats of hydrogenation. So again, looking at one pentene, heat of hydrogenation, you, you reduce that one or hydrogenate that one alkene, that one pi bond, and it releases 126 kilojoules. Now for an isolated system where there's more than one sigma bond in between the pi bonds. They're just com two completely separate alkenes is the way we treat them. And, uh, and we can kind of see that here when the heat of hydrogenation is now 250 kilojoules, almost exactly double what we saw for a sim simple alkene. And that's exactly what we expect. However, with a conjugated system here, we see that it actually releases 225 kilojoules less energy so than an isolated system here. And, and so that's evidence that there's some special stability associated with this system where there's only a single uh, sigma bond between the two pi bonds. And that's kind of the deal here. It turns out there is some stability. It actually lowers the energy. And so as a result, if we kind of graph this out a little bit, so these both end up at the same place because they're both being reduced down to pentane. So, but they're not starting off at the same place. So, and as a result, your conjugated one is the lower energy. And your isolated one, the higher energy. And so as we see, because the, the conjugated one again starts out lower in energy, it has less energy to release and therefore a lower or less negative delta H here, in this case, a lower heat of hydrogenation. Now there's one other arrangement here that you're not gonna encounter too often, but it is something we should address. And that's, in this case, a cumulated double bond where you've got uh, two pi bonds right next to each other. In which case, uh, the only way that's possible is if they're actually orthogonal is the word we'd use for the, uh, they're 90 degrees apart. So you got one pi bond, say in the horizontal plane, and then one, I said vertical plane, and then one in the horizontal plane. That's kind of the way that would work here. And so uh, as a result, there's no way these end up being conjugated. It turns out to be conjugated, they've all got to lie in the same plane. We'll find that out later. So these are definitely not conjugated. And it turns out rather than lowering the energy, this extra repulsion due to their proximity actually raises their energy. And as a result, the cumulated system starts out even higher energy than either even the isolated system. And so it's going to release even more energy when you hydrogenate it. Cool. Now we compared uh, alkynes along the way as well. And if you look at a typical 
typical alkyne, when you reduce it all the way with catalytic hydrogenation here, so two equivalents of H2, so it turns out it releases more heat than reducing two isolated or even accumulated alkenes, it turns out. So it turns out with your pi electrons, again, uh, in this carbon-carbon location, again, these are also going to be in the exact same location in perpendicular planes, uh, but the extra repulsion even more so here. So it turns out reducing the first pi bond, uh, bigger release of energy than the second one, uh, just due to that extra, uh, again, repulsion between the pi electrons that's present when you have the triple bond. And as a result, then, reducing the two pi bonds of a triple bond, again, releases more energy than reducing two separate single, uh, two separate alkene uh, double bonds, whether it be conjugated, isolated, or accumulated. And so we can come up with some new rules here. So uh, one, if you're just comparing, uh, you know, the reduction of a couple of different alkenes, then we see that accumulated release the most energy, then isolated, and then conjugated. We also see now that with alkynes, we can throw that in the mix as well, and, and definitely reducing a triple bond is going to release more energy than reducing two double bonds. So now we can add a couple of extra rules into how we compare heats of hydrogenation. And the first thing we should realize is just that the more pi bonds you reduce, the more energy that's going to be released. So we can see this in comparing the alkene to any of these other options that all have two pi bonds. So reducing the alkene reduces, uh, you know, releases significantly less energy than reducing any one of these other options which require twice as many equivalents of hydrogen. So that's the first thing we can add to the mix. We can also see that, you know, reducing a triple bond is going to release more energy than reducing two double bonds no matter what arrangement they're in. And then finally, if we're reducing two double bonds, then we can see this relationship that conjugated, reducing them, releases the least amount of energy, and then isolated, and then cumulated would release the most amount of energy, have the highest heat of hydrogenation if you're reducing double bonds. And so uh, there's various comparisons you might see. Uh, and again, for some of you, you're only going to lightly touch on this in your course. For others, this will be a big point of emphasis in this chapter. And so uh, I'm taking the time to cover it. But if it was a minor point for your class, well, then by all means, uh, watch through this at like one and a half speed. Uh, but let's take a look at several examples where we can put this to practice. All right, so now we're going to take a look at eight different comparisons uh, that kind of demonstrate how we actually go about comparing heats of hydrogenation here. And so First thing again is we're going to hydrogenate all of these completely, and the question is which is going to be the most or release the most heat or have the highest heat of hydrogenation. So we want to select the member of each pair that has the higher heat of hydrogenation. And the first thing to remember, the most important rule is the more pi bonds you're reducing, so the more pi bonds you're hydrogenating, the more energy you're going to release, the higher the heat of hydrogenation. So in these first two, we've got two pi bonds versus one, and reducing two definitely releases more energy, so higher heat of hydrogenation. Next one here, we have the same thing, reducing an alkene versus an alkyne. Well, again, one pi bond versus two. And so once again, we're going to release more energy in reducing the alkyne. Now, in this next example now, so we see that we're reducing two pi bonds in the one on the left and there's two pi bonds in the one on the right. And so first rule, more pi bonds and more energy is not going to help us. So we move on to the second rule. And this one deals with reducing a triple bond is going to release more energy than reducing two separate double bonds. And so in this case, this is going to have the higher heat of hydrogenation, release more energy. So same thing here. Here we're releasing, uh, we're reducing three total double bonds. So three total pi bonds, all double bonds. And here one double bond and one triple, but three total pi bonds. So the number of pi bonds is still the same, but that second criterion again is going to come down to a triple bond releases more than two double bonds. And so whether this is conjugated or not, that hasn't even entered the equation yet. So just got to know that a triple, the two pi bonds of a triple being reduced releases more than the two pi bonds of two separate alkenes. All right. So moving on now, so here, two pi bonds, two pi bonds, no difference there. We're not dealing with anything with alkynes, so don't have to worry about that as well. And the third criteria deals really with the crux of this chapter, and that's really that conjugated systems are more stable and release less energy, so that an isolated system and then cumulated systems end up releasing more energy. So number of pi bonds being equal, so two pi bonds, two pi bonds, Rule number one doesn't help us. No alkynes, rule number two doesn't help us. But we've got a conjugated system on the left and an isolated system on the right. And again, conjugated because there's just a single sigma bond in between the two pi bonds. So isolated because there's more than one sigma bond in between the pi bonds. And you've got to remember that, again, an isolated system starts out less stable, higher energy. And so it's got more energy to release in being hydrogenated. All right, next one here. So once again, two pi bonds, two pi bonds. Rule number one doesn't help us. No alkynes, rule number two doesn't help us. So third basis of comparison, though, again, is all about, again, uh, isolated versus conjugated versus accumulated. And here we've got a conjugated system. Here we've got a accumulated system. And the accumulateds are 
highest on the food chain there. So between those three different types of systems. So that's gonna release the most energy and have the highest heat of hydrogenation. All right, finally here, if we're comparing these two now, we've got two pi bonds, two pi bonds. Okay, check, no difference. No alkynes, okay, check. Rule number two is not gonna help us. And now conjugated system, conjugated system, and that's not gonna help us. And so we have to go down to the old criteria, the same ones we learned back with alkenes. And we learned that the more substituted alkene was more stable due to hyperconjugation. And if it starts out more stable, then it's gonna release, it has less energy to release again if you hydrogenate it. So here, if we look, uh, again, they're both conjugated systems, but if we look at how substituted they are, so this alkene right here has two carbon substituents and two hydrons. So we'd say it's di-substituted. I'll just keep track of that with a two. This one here has a carbon over here and a carbon over here and then two hydrons. So it's also di-substituted. And again, it's just how many carbon substituents are coming off each alkene. For this one here, it's got a carbon here, a carbon here, and a carbon here, and then only one hydrogen. So we'd say it's a tri substituted alkene. And then this one also is a di substituted alkene, carbon here, carbon here, and then two hydrogens. And so overall, the more substituted alkenes are on the one on the right, that makes it more stable. And more means it starts out lower energy and it has less energy release. So the higher heat of hydrogenation is gonna be the one on the left here. All right, finally, one on the right here. Once again, we've got two pi bonds, two pi bonds. So no difference in the number of pi bonds. There's no alkynes, so don't have to worry about that either. Uh, and in this case, conjugated system, conjugated system. They both have just a single sigma bond in between the pi bonds. So no difference there either. And in this case, there's no difference in how substituted they are either. So this one's got two carbon substituents. This one's also got two carbon substituents, so both disubstituted. And same thing here, two carbon substituents, one here, one here. And same thing for this guy, two carbon substituents, one here and one here. So no difference there. And so the last thing we have to look at, and remember, and again, this is not from this chapter, but old, is that uh, trans alkenes are more stable than cis alkenes. And so in this case, we see we've got a trans alkene for the one on the right, whereas here, it's a cis alkene. And since the trans is more stable, can just due to sterics, so less sterics, they're more, they're, these guys are farther apart than right here. And if the trans is more stable, it means it's lower energy, which means it has less energy to release. So the cis being higher energy is gonna release more energy when you hydrogenate it, higher heat of hydrogenation. Cool. That is kind of how we go through comparing. And again, you just got to kind of follow those rules in order. So again, first look for the number of pi bonds being reduced, then an alkyne beats two alkenes, and then cumulated releases more than uh, isolated, isolated more than conjugated, and then how substituted they are if all things else are equal, and then finally, cis is going to release more than trans. Now, if you found this lesson helpful, would you consider giving me a like and a share? That ensures that as many students as possible are also going to benefit from this lesson. If you are looking for the study guide that goes with this lesson, if you are looking for practice problems, check out my premium course on chadsprep.com. A free trial is available.